Hi everyone, before the video starts, I'd just like to tell you about this new documentary I'm a part of. It's called 96 Hours and it's still in the development stages. Uh, we've got a lot more to do and so we've developed an Indiegogo campaign for you to check out. It will tell you more information about the film and also give you an opportunity to contribute if you feel so kind. Uh, but with that being said, I'll uh, let you enjoy the rest of the video. For this video, you'll need to know that capturing film on set is otherwise known as acquisition, where you capture the highest quality footage you can in camera, so that you have the ability to manipulate it to a high degree later on in post-production. For IMAX, acquisition is a bombshell of information due to its absolutely massive size. It's simply the largest motion picture format ever made. It's roughly 10 times larger than film stock used on your average Fast and Furious film. But to fully describe the grandiose of capturing an IMAX image, you first need to understand a little bit about celluloid film stock. The format that filmmakers like Christopher Nolan, J.J. Abrams and Quentin Tarantino are all so in love with. It's the traditional way of shooting films that's still used today, but isn't as commonly used due to the sophistication of modern digital sensors. The size of film stock is often measured by the perforations it has on its sides. These are the little sprocket holes that the camera uses to accelerate the film through the magazine and expose it behind the lens. A pretty common film size is Super 35 3 perforation, which was a film size used to film features like Kill Bill, Shutter Island, Lincoln, True Grit and a lot of other great films. This is more than enough for a lot of filmmakers, with an effective scanned resolution of 4096 by 2286, which is just as good as a lot of modern cameras today. Since it's a three perforation film size, the aspect ratio, this is the shape of the frame, is kind of wide at 1.7 to one. Now, if we were to add another perforation to make the frame slightly taller, it gets larger and changes shape. It also adds a little bit of resolution, making it Super 35 4 perforation, which can be scanned in at 4096 by 3072, with an aspect ratio of 133 to 1. This is also known as Academy Ratio, something you might find in older black and white films. So when you see films where the frame shape changes slightly, this is likely why. It's also why films look different on your TV screen. They just use a different film stock, depending on the project. So film size and resolution are directly affected by the perforations on the film stock, as well as, obviously, how wide the frame is. So that's an example for other formats. Let's see how IMAX compares. So if we start off with an iPhone camera, it's 6.17 millimeters by 4.55 millimeters. Its effective resolution is basically 4K uh, UHD, which is 3840 by 2160 pixels. Uh, this is typically what you have on your average smartphone. Tangerine, Unsane are two films that were shot on an iPhone. The second frame size we're going to look at is Super 16. This is a two perforation film stock with a size of 12.52 by 1.40. It has an effective resolution of 2K or 2060 by 1218. Next is 35 millimeter. This is a very common film stock and it was the example that we used earlier. It has an effective resolution of 4096 by 2286. Next is Academy 35. This is the old 1.33 aspect ratio film stock that was used to film 
things like Citizen Kane, or more recently, the Grand Budapest Hotel. It has an effective resolution of 3,620 by 2,632. Now we're going to see some of the larger film formats, starting with VistaVision 8 Perforation. This has an effective resolution of 6,204 by 4,114. This is a film format that Alfred Hitchcock was very fond of, filming Vertigo and North by Northwest in this format. Now the second highest is 65mm 5 perforation, with an effective resolution of 8,661 by 3,787. This is an incredibly high resolution film format that filmmakers are still after today. Some great films like 2001 A Space Odyssey, Samsara and The Hateful Eight were filmed using this format. Now we're getting on to the IMAX format. It's 15 perforations in size and has an effective resolution of 11,586 by 8,658. This is the format that we've been talking about today. As you can see, it's quite a bit bigger than the other formats we've talked about. You know Christopher Nolan is a big fan of this format, shooting some scenes of Interstellar, Inception and Dunkirk on this format. The sheer size of an IMAX negative allows for such a high resolution scan that there aren't many, if any, competing acquisition formats in terms of resolution. Christopher Nolan and his director of photography, Wally Fisher, are huge proponents of the format because they believe it's simply the best way to immerse the audience into the film. The closest digital format available for filmmakers is the Arri Alexa 65, which is close to the aforementioned 65mm 5 perforations film. However, this camera is only able to record at a measly 6K resolution. The highest resolution large format digital cameras we have are things like the Red Monstro's VistaVision or the Zcam F8, which record up to 8K resolution, which is nice for them, but really it's nowhere near the potential of an IMAX film stock. So I guess the question we have to ask ourselves is, why doesn't everyone just film in IMAX? It's most certainly the highest fidelity and resolution for capturing a motion picture, and it gives the best available image. Unfortunately, there are a lot of challenges for filmmakers to overcome before they can start filming your wedding video on IMAX. One of the biggest challenges that filmmakers face when filming in IMAX is finding lenses to film with. Now, to understand what I mean, you have to know that not all lenses are made equal. Each lens has what's called an image circle. Essentially, this is how much of an area a lens can project onto. Here we have a lens designed to cover a small sensor, like this Panasonic camera has. As you can see, at its widest angle, it covers the entire frame. It just looks like a regular image on this camera. Now, if we put it on this full frame camera here, with its larger sensor, at its widest angle, the lens doesn't cover the image circle of the entire sensor. And so we have this black circle from when there's no light hitting the sensor. This is because the image circle is much too small for a large sensor. Since the film stock for IMAX is so large, there aren't all that many cinema lenses that cover such a large image circle. Cinema lens manufacturers simply don't have a stake in producing lenses for IMAX cameras. It's a format used so infrequently that designing and manufacturing lenses that might not be used often isn't worth the cost. The largest image circle cinema lenses are designed for the 65mm format for the RE65 or the Panavision 65. So the solution most filmmakers use is to take medium format lenses designed for large format photography and modify them for an IMAX camera. This is what ended up happening for some shots in Dunkirk and the lenses used in The Dark Knight were also made in this manner too. 
This is in some ways a good thing since photography lenses are designed to be a lot smaller than cinema lenses. However, they don't tend to have certain features that cinema lenses use. You often encounter focus breathing, clicked aperture, and the lack of focus gears make it very hard to focus. However, I'm sure they're easily modified for the bigger productions. For a lot of Christopher Nolan's projects, there were quite a few modified Hasselblad lenses that I'm sure were up for the job. Since some of their lenses were used for the important task of taking pictures on the moon. I'm always impressed by the technologies filmmakers develop to push the boundaries of motion picture. It's great that filmmakers like Nolan and Abrams choose to use IMAX and look at film in its most basic form. I'm excited to see the new film Tenet and pretty much any other film as soon as the cinemas open again. Okay, so thanks for watching the video all the way through. I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a rating as it helps me see if I'm doing a good job and to see if you like the video. My last video was about documentaries and their problems, so have a look at that if you'd like to. I'd also like you to comment avocado toast if you got this far into the video. Follow me on Twitter, just because. And uh, okay, that's it. My name is James Hayes, and thank you for watching.